welcome back to Confidently Cherished. Today, I want to talk to you about how do you know when it's time to leave a relationship? You know, I see so much content on social media that's about like, oh, this relationship is bad, leave them. Uh, This is a red flag, that is a red flag, leave them. And I post that stuff myself. I agree with it. And next week's episode is going to be about some red flags to watch out for. But you know, it's one thing to say that when you've, when you're just starting to get to know someone, you know, and you're using your discernment to try to figure out whether or not this is someone that you should continue dating. But what happens when you are already in a relationship and you've been in that relationship for a while? You know, I find with my clients, this is often the most difficult situation for clients that I have because most of the women that I work with, they're single when they come to me and they're looking at past relationships and being able to spot like, oh, okay, now that I look at this relationship with some distance, I can see that, you know, these patterns were happening in the first few weeks, first couple of months. And if I had been more self-aware, I would have picked these out and maybe not stayed in that relationship as long. But it's so much harder when you are already in the relationship, you know, is so much harder to really have that perspective and to have that outside look. Um, even when you have someone guiding you through it and holding space for you like a coach, it can still be difficult to really process it. And that's why I wanted to do this episode to give you kind of some guiding principles for knowing whether or not you should end a relationship. So I have five things that you can, you should consider. And so the first one is the problems that you're having in the relationship. You know, no relationship is perfect. Every relationship, whether it's a friendship, it's a marriage, it's a family relationship, whatever, um, they all have their problems. So when you're looking at the problems that you're having with the person you're dating, you need to ask yourself, are these problems about a particular situation or are these problems about who we are as people? And because of who we are as people, these things can't be solved. So think back to the beginning of the pandemic And I say the beginning of the pandemic because it feels like it's never going to end, right? We're in like season three, the the third year of this mess. But but think back to the beginning when lockdowns first went in place. You know, there were a lot of relationships that ended during that time. Um, Divorce rates, I know the divorce rates rose very heavily over in China Um, I remember reading several stories about it, but I believe they also rose here in the United States as well. And I think one of the reasons for that is, you know, when people really spent more time together, more time than, you know, the way particularly the Western world works now where, yeah, you get married to somebody, but you know, you and that person may both be working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And yeah, you're married and you're living together, but you're not really spending a whole lot of time together other than like the time that you spend sleeping. And I think that allows people to really overlook a lot of problems for for better or for worse. And I, I say that because so the thing we're looking at is whether or not the problem is based on a situation itself or whether it's based on who the two of you are as people. Because sometimes, you know, talking about situations with the pandemic and all of that, sometimes the problem that you're having seems really big because you're in it. Um, Again, with the pandemic, a lot of people lost jobs. And money is one of the main reasons why people get divorced. So you could be in that situation and because it feels really bad in the moment because it feels catastrophic in the moment, Um, you and your partner could start resenting each other, being frustrated with each other, being upset with each other over all of the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, you know, 
Um, we shouldn't have taken this job knowing that it was going to be unstable to begin with. Or if we had saved up money beforehand, before this pandemic hit, like I told you we needed to save up money, then like we wouldn't have these problems right now. You know, you can get caught up in things like that. And that situation doesn't necessarily have to break the relationship. But because you are so caught up in that and you don't have the ability to look forward into the future, you don't have the ability to um, be more hopeful, to be more optimistic, to really think about those solutions, you can end what was a perfectly good and healthy relationship over something that was temporary. Um, Because, you know, job losses happen. But people get new jobs. Sometimes people get better jobs, especially in this economy with the great resignation and all. More companies are offering better benefits and better salaries to keep people. You know, it doesn't just have to be jobs. It can be, you know, I have seen situations where one person in a relationship ends up in a chronic illness, for example, and the stress just takes its toll. And the two people end up becoming frustrated with each other because one person feels like they didn't sign up for this. The other person feels like the um, the person who's healthy is not caring enough for them. And they allow that to end the relationship. So when you're thinking about ending your relationship, really look at the situation and see if it's about, you know, we're constantly fighting about this situation, but not really with each other. And see if you can get on the same page. See if the two of you can become the two of us versus this problem, not the two of us versus each other. On the other hand, sometimes it takes those situations to bring to light the fact that the two of you really aren't compatible. Back to using money as an example. So if you and your partner were both making good money, And you don't even have to be married for this situation to apply. You can be dating someone. If the two of you were making really good money and, you know, you're having a good time going on vacations, you're going to nice restaurants, stuff like that, and the amount of money being spent is not a big deal because, like, hey, both of you have it. And then something happens where one of you doesn't have as much money and you start really learning based on the reaction to that that your spending habits aren't compatible like it's it's one thing for one person to be a little bit more of a spender and the other person to be a little bit more of a saver but I'm talking to the point where the person who loses their job has such bad money habits and bad money management that they quickly say lose their apartment or they go into horrendous amounts of debt Because they don't know how to manage anything and save anything and they were making money all this time and just spending it as it came in. Or, you know, the other person starts nagging about um, how how their partner is spending money or saving money or how they're not spending or saving. You know, you could find out that there are some really fundamental differences in your personality that's going to make marriage very difficult. You could find out that the other person has habits that until a certain situation exposed that habit, um, you didn't know about it. And now that you know about it, when you think long term, hey, if I were to marry this person and this person kept up that habit for 10, 15, 20 years, the rest of their lives, um, maybe it's not something that you can deal with. (laughs) So that's the first question that you need to ask yourself. I can't believe I spent 10 minutes on just the first one. Um, I promise you, we're going to speed this up. (laughs) So the first question was your problems. Are they about the temporary situation that you find yourself in? Or do those problems reveal fundamental differences between the two of you? The second one, which I promise I can definitely handle quickly, is what have you and this person done to tackle this issue before? So oftentimes... In relationships, you get into this pattern of having the exact same relationships over and over again, or the exact same types of arguments over and over again. And instead of having these deja vu moments, consider what have you done 
to actually solve the problem, not complaining to your friends and your family members, not giving each other the silent treatment, but know what have you actually done to solve this problem? Have you gone to couples counseling? Have you gone to counseling individually if this person won't go with you? Um, Have you tried different methods of conflict resolution? If you were in a serious relationship Um, Have you tried having someone intervene, even if it's not a counselor, like say a third party that both of you are friends with, maybe allowing them to, you know, be a mediator and the two of you can or the three of you can sit down and talk where sometimes when you have that third person who is trusted, don't let anybody up in your business. But (laughs) if you have someone who is trusted, you know, they can help you both like see the situation more clearly plus because honestly since there's another person there you're going to be more polite and you're going to watch what you say a little bit more and you'll give more consideration so think about what is it that you've done in the past to try to solve these relationship problems and if you've done nothing what can you try before you ultimately throw in the towel i'm not saying that you know, all relationships have to be resolved. Sometimes you do have to let go and and leave that person. But generally, you'll feel better if you at least make an attempt at trying to save the relationship. And also, I just feel like nowadays, since anything can be misconstrued, I want to be clear, I'm not talking about situations where you're being abused. Um, If you're being abused, don't try to save that relationship, just leave. But short of that, you want to try to at least make an attempt to heal this problem before you go. So number three is how often are things good in the relationship versus when they're bad? And when I say that, I want you to consider not only the time that you spend with them, but the time that you spend without them as well. So when it comes to having a partner Being with this person should make your life better and it should also make you a better person. So it's kind of obvious if you maybe take down pen and paper and you write down how often you feel good with this person versus how often this person makes you feel terrible because they talk down to you or um, they just don't seem as passionate about the relationship, whatever the case may be. But also think about how do you feel when this person is not around and you're thinking about them? Are they inconsistent with how often they call and text? And because they're inconsistent, you're often anxious waiting by the phone when they're not around. Um, Are they full of drama? So when they're not around, you just feel more at peace. You can focus better. Um, It's a better environment for you. When they're not around... Do you have this feeling of you think about them and you think about them warmly and you're looking forward to seeing them? Or when you think about the next time you see them, does it feel more like it's a chore? It's an obligation. So you want to think about how this person makes you feel both with them and without them before you consider whether or not it's time for the relationship to end. And that brings me to point four, which is this whole idea of sunk cost fallacy. So sunk cost fallacy is a term that is actually borrowed from economics. And it's this idea that people will stay in bad situations. um, Or again, when we're talking about economics, they will stay with a bad business model because they've put so much time and money and effort into it. And they don't want to lose all the time and money and effort that they've invested already. So back to that third point I made about how you feel when they're not around, you know, you can get into a point where a relationship has no passion behind it anymore, um, where you no longer really feel attracted to the person and you're in the relationship because you feel like you need to be, uh, you feel like you need to take care of the person or you've been in the relationship for so long, um, that it's become a chore. You can also be in a situation where you feel like there aren't many other options out there. So maybe you should just stick 
with the option that you currently have and live with it. Either way, you are throwing good after bad. You're throwing your good, your time, your energy, your essence, your femininity, the best years of your life, your essence, all that is you. You're you're throwing yourself into this relationship that is bad, that needs to end because you've already given so much of yourself to the situation. And it doesn't make sense. <laughs> just just a loving reminder that if you are in this situation, it doesn't make sense. Because the one thing we don't get back is time. You know, you hear stories all the time about people who are millionaires and they lose their money and they get it back. But you don't get time back. <clears throat> you don't get your time back. So if you are spending all of this time trying to save a relationship because you wasted so much time, you're going to find yourself in some serious deja vu six months, a year from now, talking about how you need to keep staying in this relationship, spending time in this relationship because you spent so much time. And then <laughs> six months to a year after that, you're going to be still in this relationship talking about how you're still investing time in this relationship to someone who doesn't love you the way that you need to be loved because you've invested so much time where you could just leave and cut your losses. Now, the fifth factor in whether or not it's time to leave the relationship is who have you become in this relationship and who do you need to become in order to save it? So relationships change us. That's just a fact. Every relationship you're in, romantic or otherwise, will change you. It will change your perspective, just seeing things through someone else's perspective. So the goal in our relationships are for them to make us better, um, for them to make our lives better. So when you look at your relationship, are you in a situation where you used to be vibrant and happy and outgoing and having a bunch of friends, but now you're with someone who's controlling. So you are quiet and you stay home all the time and you never speak up for yourself because you're constantly walking on eggshells in your relationship. Are you in a situation where because you are frustrated with the person that you're with, you have taken that frustration, that resentment, that anger, that bitterness out on other people so people don't think of you as friendly or as kind as you used to be. And not only look at how at who you've become since you've been in this relationship, but I also want you to look at who you need to become. And I do mean that both good and bad, because you could be in a situation where because of who this person is, you know that in order to make the relationship, quote unquote, work, you have to be a massive people pleaser. You have to change everything about who you are and you have to, you know, bow down or submit to what they want and change your personality in order to make things work. You know, I remember years ago I was dating someone and it was a very similar situation like that where he and I were dating for a while. And when we were, when we first started dating, he used to always talk about how he loved my personality. He loved what I was about. He loved the things that I had to say. And as we were dating, he got promoted in his job. He was around a different circle of friends now. And because of the people that he was around, he wanted me to be quieter. Um, he wanted me to dress differently. He wanted me to change the way that I talked. Um, have fewer opinions. And anyone who knows me knows that that's really not going to work. So, <laughs> you know, I didn't blame him. I understood that he was trying to get into the circle and he really wanted to fit in well. And part of him fitting in well was having a partner, having a woman who fit in with the women in that group too. But it just wasn't going to work for me. So, Think about who you've become and who you need to become. Also, if it requires you to level up too, because this happens as well. You know, 
I have so many clients who in their past, they were in really toxic relationships, right? And these toxic relationships were a repeat of the patterns that they grew up with. So growing up, maybe their parents were married, but their parents didn't have the best relationship or they were raised by a single parent or a grandparent who wasn't in very healthy relationships either. So that's all they knew. And then they get into a relationship for the first time with someone who is actually healthy. And the person they need to become is someone who is just as healthy. So if they stay in this relationship, in order to not sabotage the relationship, they're going to have to continue working on themselves. They're going to have to go to therapy. They're going to have to see a coach. They're going to have to work on themselves, become healthier, become better at communicating, establish boundaries, learn how to receive love and help and attention because they grew up in environments where they weren't very um, great at receiving because people in their environments weren't givers. So they have to change who they are for the better in order to be in that relationship. That takes a lot of self-awareness and honesty. Sometimes you might have to let go of a relationship that is good because you are not at a place where you've done that work and it would be a disservice. Sometimes you can be in those relationships and you have to be with someone who is extremely patient with you while you're doing that work. But you have to understand when you look at whether or not a relationship is worth saving, you know, sometimes you're with someone who you feel like they're constantly challenging you or whatever you do is not quote unquote good enough for them, but they're not challenging you. They're inviting you to really take a look at maybe the toxic patterns that you were raised with, to really take a look at your habits of settling for less, to really take a look at the attitude you've developed of you're so extremely independent and you don't need help from anyone. They're inviting you to maybe take a look at those things and make decisions that would make you not just a better person, but a happier person as well. So these are the five questions you need to ask when you're looking at whether or not it's time to leave a relationship. Number one, the problems that you're having in the relationship, are they about that situation or about who the two of you are. Number two, how have you tried to deal with these problems in the past? Number three, how often are things good and how do you feel when this person isn't around? Number four, are you staying in this relationship only because you've already stayed for so long? And number five, who have you become in this relationship? And what type of person would you need to become in order to sustain this relationship? So let me know if these questions made you think. Let me know what your biggest takeaways were from this episode. Feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'm at Keisha Rice, K-E-S-H-I-A-R-I-C-E. Screenshot this episode, tag me. Let me know what your biggest takeaways were. I will talk to you later. I love you so much. Bye. Hey there. So you made it all the way to the end of the episode, which means I have two things to say. One, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And two, you like me. You really like me. So I would appreciate it if you would show that like by subscribing to this podcast so that more people can hear about it and enjoy it as much as you do. And if you want to know more about any of the links that I mentioned on this episode or any guests that I've had, be sure to go to KeishaRice.com slash links. That's K-E-S-H-I-A-R-I-C-E dot com slash links. I can't wait to talk to you again in the next episode. So see you then.